But I am pleased to offer these remarks to this Caribbean Coastal Resilience Forum on behalf of the people and the government of the Bahamas. Welcome to our shores. Our environment is an integrated ecosystem consisting of wetlands, coral reefs, lakes, and rivers, and pressed in sandy beaches. There could not be a more appropriate time for the IADP to have this dialogue with its Caribbean members. The world has been shaken and touched by the devastation wrought by monster storms in our region and indeed all coastal communities, including those of the continental United States. Mean sea level rise of a single meter, so about three feet, could place 36% of major tourism properties, 38% of airports, 14% of road networks, and 90% of seaports at risk. We recognize the increasingly complex and devastating impact of climate change on sustainability in this region, especially on small island developing states. Without being directly hit, there was an average of 2% of our GDP in terms of loss and damage. And so therefore, we can only imagine with a direct hit the level of damage and loss that we will experience. We have to do something about increasing the resilience of Caribbean populations living on the coast to some of the new hazards that we are experiencing. 62,000 people every single day are displaced by climate. And if nature is a solution, we're going to figure out what it is and how to pay for it. Nature reduces risk. It's about data, it's about science, it's about understanding the natural processes now and in the future. It's about understanding the hazards and the risks that presents and the vulnerabilities. In Belize, coastal habitats were found to prevent erosion over 340 kilometers, resulting in average avoided damages of 2.5 billion a year. Une aire marine protégée, comme les aires terrestres protégées, uh, a des bénéfices divers, tant au point de vue écologique, culturel et scientifique, au point de vue social et économique. Alors, au point de vue écologique, par exemple, c'est Quand on prend les mangroves que l'on protège au niveau des zones côtières, ça sert à séquestrer le carbone, le CO2, et ça produit également de l'oxygène. Ça nous aide à casser l'énergie des vagues de la mer. Ça aide également à la reproduction des espèces animales et marines. C'est déjà très important. Mangroves are reducing flooding damages every year by 25% across the Philippines. And that's not just to property, that's to people, and it's in particular to the most socially vulnerable people as well. With just a one meter loss in reefs, the costs of storms would double on those coastlines. So reefs are providing really significant benefits and we can quantitatively value them. We should be constantly seeking to one, learn entirely new methods and apply novel solutions. And as well, to further optimize and refine existing capabilities. Embracing innovative technology, its attendant efficiency gains, as well as the capture, analysis, and application of big and dynamic data New technologies provide essential data and reduce collection and analysis time by 80%. The methodology is using data from previous hurricanes. We can validate the present losses and now uh, using the, the urban growth scenarios or using the climate change scenarios, we can evaluate how much will be the losses in the future. Hybrid solutions can blend, can bring to a project and to even a region in a country that blend of risk and costs which are tolerable. And so I think there's a need for um, bringing this concept across again to all planners, or regulators, or engineers, or, or, or politicians. Satellite based topography of the territory. It's a new boy in the block, it's exciting, and I think we should find a way to 
build capacity in the region to access that. Anyone that is impacted by that process must be engaged at all levels. It's about having an honest and open dialogue and conversation with these stakeholders. It's about viewing them as partners and not just as stakeholders to be consulted with. It's really important the way we talk to the private sector, uh, the way that we approach the private sector, and the way that we encourage the private sector to become involved. There is a considerable amount of accumulated experience in ICZM within the region. Resilience is a regional mandate and the different ICZM programs in the region can learn from one another and share regional best practices. Strengthen this regional cooperation, we must forge innovative partnerships with the private sector. IDB's vision for the Caribbean is to improve lives by creating vibrant, sustainable economies where people are safe, productive, and happy.